Welcome to Ladies of Another View on Back, and it's Monday. We're feeling it, right? <laughs> well, and it's so good. I mean, I don't think, Patty, I don't think you and I have sat here together in about three weeks. Yes, I great? know, together. The One stars have the other's back. Right? She's yep. been getting whiplash going back and forth, and it's like, you know, so it's kind of fun everyone to be back again. I think yes. everybody's in town. I think Andrea was gone for a a young Republican convention. I was at a Freedom Fest. You had been to see your dad. Yes, um, You've been at the lake, tearing yeah. down schoolhouses. I mean, Carmen's taking a couple weeks off. So um, it's just good to be in it the is. studio. Good it to is. see you again. Yeah, I'm glad it's, yeah, it has been a while. So I should explain to you, I'm with Jan and Mary, in Hello. case any of you don't know us, and I'm Patty. And I'm excited. We have two fantastic guests today. We have Lila Rose is going to be um, coming with us in the second part of the show. But to start, we have Britta Curl. I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank hey, you. I'm happy to be here. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Britta. She's here because she was just named officially last week to the U.S. Women's National Hockey Team. Congratulations for that. Thank That's you. I'm super pumped. Mary and I both know her because she's a graduate of St. Mary's High School. Our kids both went to school there with her, and um, she's been playing for three years now with the University of Wisconsin Badgers, right? Go oh, Badgers. Yes. Number yep. 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you've been having an amazing time there, too. So your freshman year, um, you were one of eight students ever that in the history of um, University of Wisconsin that had 11 assists for 33 points, right, your freshman year? I believe so. Wow. Yep, 22 goals. You tied for the fifth most in the school history by a freshman, so good job. Thank you. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, it's like, I think those of us that know you saw it coming, but how does that make you feel? I mean, I've never really thought about it, but when, you know, someone says something like that or the stats, I think it's it's pretty cool to be uh, mentioned with a lot of the other great players that have come out of here, uh, especially from people back home that have been following me. Wonderful. And so how did you get started? Why don't you tell our viewers how you got started? Yeah, um, my dad, he has been involved in hockey his whole life. He played growing up in Kandu, a small town in North Dakota. Um, he got my older brother into it. So I guess as long as I can remember, I was just skating with my older brother in the backyard. My dad would build a rink every winter. And I don't know, it's just been a part of our family as long as I can remember. Well, as long as you can remember, I saw on your bio on your school page that you started at three years old playing hockey officially, right? I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't really remember the first time, but I'm sure as soon as I could walk, my dad put me in skates, and <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't pretty, but I was trying. <laughs> so a lot of girls get into skating, and they choose between hockey and figure skating as far as the sport's concerned. Was it just the, the family upbringing that kind of steered you towards hockey, or did you do a little figure skating as well? I never actually did do any figure skating. Um, I mean, I guess my mom tried to get me into ballet. I didn't really enjoy that. <laughs> um, I think I'm just more of a, a competitive, maybe a little more aggressive um, personality. So I definitely gravitated towards the, the hockey side. And I would think part of that comes from having an older brother, too. Like, say, if you had an older sister and she was a figure skater, say, say you were born first, right? Um, you might all be figure skaters. So I think there's something to say for that, too, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I looked up to my brother. I still do, so I always wanted to do what he was doing. So I guess followed him to the hockey. Is it unusual that you stayed in Bismarck the whole time playing hockey? Because I know some girls go away, right, to special schools to yeah. where they can really concentrate on hockey. Yeah, it's, I think um, in North Dakota it's a little more common for players to leave just because the competition isn't as high as, say, Minnesota or out east. Um, it's just where we're at right now. but. I don't know, I felt like I wanted to stay home, play other sports. I did soccer and track in high school and, um, you know, grow up with my friends that I've been going to school with my whole life. So I felt like I was doing the right things. And as long as I kept working hard, I would, I would put myself in a good position to, you know, do whatever I wanted to do. You played with the Bismarck Blizzards and you did win four state championships, right? Yes, yep. So why don't you tell us a little bit about co-ops, like school co-ops, um, because St. Mary's does not have a hockey team. Tell us how you got on a team and if you could choose different schools. Yeah, so 
with hockey, there are just not really enough uh, girls playing in, in Bismarck right now for, you know, Century and BHS to have their own teams. Um, you know, next couple of years, I think they're planning on changing that. But uh, we had about 25 players. But uh, I got to be able to experience, you know, different schools, just a little different look than my other sports. So do you think that that cooperation between schools was a, a positive? Yeah, or was for there sure. Still, I think still competition on the team. Yeah, I think it's good in, in all areas. Um, you got to meet different people, but, and then just the competition in itself, you know, there's people that play against each other in soccer and volleyball that are on the same team and it just kind of adds a little different element. It's kind of fun. You've had a lot of experiences, though. Even though you stayed in Bismarck, you you were named to a team to represent the United States. I think it was your senior year. You played in Russia, right? Can you tell us about that? Yes. Yep. So I had to try out starting in the summer of that year. Um, went to a few different USA camps um, and then got chosen to go play in Russia at the Worlds. Um, so you get to meet people from all over the country, some of the best players at my age. And... I think that was one of the coolest experiences I've gotten. You know, my parents got to come watch me. And uh, it was. I don't know what's happening. Okay. With our yeah, we're having a little bit of yeah, a. Why don't we go to a break right now? Um, yeah, unless, we'll take a quick the break. the sound comes back. And then we'll <laughs> go ahead. It doesn't sound like it is. Yep. We'll be right back after these messages with Ladies of Another View on back. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. Watch us weeknights at 9 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. Calling all first responders. Join us Saturday, July 31st for First Responders Night at the Bismarck Event Center. The Bucks take on the Green Bay Blizzard with a 7.10 p.m. Central Time kickoff and will highlight those who serve and protect our communities. For more information on tickets, visit BismarckBucks.com and download your free general admission ticket today. Saturday, July 31st, it's the Blizzard versus your Bismarck Bucks. See you on the 31st. Go Bucks! Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID-safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options, from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all.
Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back. And once again, we're joined with Britta Curl, who was just named as of last week to the women's national hockey team, U.S. team, of course. And uh, Britta, I found some real cute pictures of you when you were just a little girl. I want to show those so everybody can <laughs> enjoy them when you were starting to play hockey. Oh my yep. gosh. Looks like she's ready to go. Yeah. In <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Looks like your mom or dad are saying, smile, Britta, and you're like, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So about how old were you here? Mm, I must have been seven or eight, maybe. Ready and form. Absolutely. <laughs> Britta, when you were that young, how much did you love hockey? Did you eat, sleep, drink, you know, hockey or... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have been in love with it since I started. I don't really know what it is about it, but I don't know. I just, I knew I wanted to do it as long as I could. And that's kind of when like the dream started when I was that old, you know, I wanted to play in college. I wanted to play in the Olympics, that type of thing. What I love about your hockey career is that you're just not single-minded. For instance, you were the salutatorian at St. Mary's High School. And I remember I saw you at an open house and I told you how much I loved your speech. And I was able to dig up an old article about it on the Tribune. And it talked about that you were saying to the students how much we should appreciate our education here, that it was a privilege. And I, I really like that, you know, that students don't often think of that. There you were. Do you remember a little bit about your speech? Yeah, I remember a little bit. I kind of wanted to make it uh, you know, a little bit funny, a little bit lighthearted, but also, you know, talk about the journey and all the things we got to experience together at that school. Um, it was cool. Awesome. You want to like tell some, like someone who wants to get into hockey or have a good education. Do you have any words of advice, or, you know, coming back from your speech? Um, I would say just start small, start by having fun. You don't need to, you know, accomplish anything that, you think you might need to. Um, I When I started, it was just about having fun and getting to play the game. And as far as education goes, that's one thing that's really important to me. I, I try to work as hard at school as I do on the ice because um, that's going to be something that's going to be important for the rest of my life. So um, I'm really glad I went to St. Mary's. It's an awesome school. Awesome. So can you describe for the viewers kind of what the tryouts are like for nationals? I mean, Who's there? Who shows up? Who makes the decisions? Yeah, it's definitely a long, ongoing process. Um, this past year and a half, obviously, has been a little different than usual, but we usually have maybe three or four camps uh, a, a year. They're maybe a week long, and you show up, you get evaluated, you uh, practice and scrimmage and stuff. Um, and then you can make teams from those camps. Uh, coaches will select 20 to 25 players to make, you know, Worlds or Four Nations Cups or um, eventually the Olympics. So it's definitely a long process. I've been to quite a few camps in my life. Does this mean it's a potential stepping stone then to the Women's Olympics in ice hockey? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean... This is this is the same team that they're going to be choosing from to to take to the Olympics. Um, I got selected for the residency program that starts in October. So um, basically, we'll be training from October until the Olympics, and they'll make some cuts. You know, the roster might change, but uh, I won't be going to school next year. So I'll be training hopefully to make the Olympics. It's obviously not certain yet, but well, fingers crossed. And yep. Sign exactly. of the cross and everything yeah, in between. Absolutely. We're, and this would have been your senior year, right? So you're taking a year off? Yes, I would be going into my senior year. And I want to add, too, that you are an honor student at University of Wisconsin, right? Uh, yes. Yep. I don't know how you do it. And when you were at St. Mary's, you played soccer, too. Um, yes, she did. With your daughter, right? <laughs> yeah, what? I don't know. There's a quick photo I sent, and you got to see this one, Britta. This one just cracks me up. It's you and Sydney. Um, you were both selected as the all tournament team uh, for at state hockey or state <laughs> soccer. Anyway, so I had seen that, and that was posted by St. Mary's soccer team. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, I remember those good times on that team. Uh, I loved soccer, but hockey just loved it a little bit more. Right, and it's kind of sort of the same rules, though, isn't it? Like you know, 
it's grass versus ice, but I know there's yes. not the icing, et cetera, et cetera, but it's still, you got the goals and you got the same kind of positions too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's very similar. I mean, a lot of just the, the in-game thinking process, you know, X's and O's, it's very similar how the passing works and how to open up space for your teammates. So I think it really helped me in both hockey and soccer to play both sports. I think it made me a little bit more well-rounded. Well, and it keeps you in shape too. I know um, Sydney, I mean, when you guys are on that soccer field, it was amazing. But that picture, that was in Fargo. And you guys, it was so hot on that on that field that the bottom of their shoes were melting. Oh, my Whoa. gosh. Yeah, Sydney's shoes were melted. I know most of them were, but it was just, and we were trying to keep these kids hydrated, et cetera, et cetera. But enough about soccer. Let's get back to <laughs> hockey. But it was just, it just, I just had that flashback while I'm sitting here how hot it was that day. Um, but, yeah, you know, just awful. the intensity of preparing for the Olympics, you know, because you read a lot about these people that are that good. And it's a big sacrifice to a certain extent, right? Um, so I think it is amazing, though, that you are able to be somewhat well-rounded. But how many hours a day when you're in training are you putting on the ice? So typically here at Wisconsin, um, you know, right now I'm here actually training this summer. I'm taking a one class, but we wake up at, 6 a.m. We go work out at 6:30. Um, it's maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and then uh, we have practice in the afternoon. So, you know, sometimes I'll I'll do some extra things on my own, but it's usually two, three hours a day. And then during the season, it, it could be a little bit more, depending on you know if we have games and stuff. So, what kind of skills is it that you feel that you personally need to work on? What what things yeah, do you always strive for? I think uh, my skating is one thing that I've been trying to work on this summer. Um, just becoming stronger, being able to use my edges a little bit better. I think I have pretty good size and I can use my body to, to my advantage a little bit better. So I've been working on that this summer. So I know we talked a little bit about education. What are you majoring in? And is that going to, is taking this year off going to set you back or how's that going to work? Yep. So I'm going to get a degree in kinesiology. Um, I'm doing a few pre-med classes, just not sure exactly what I want to do yet after I graduate, but, uh, this year option, it shouldn't really make a difference as far as, uh, my graduation plan. Um, it may be kind of nice just to get a little break. Um, I'm taking orga organic chemistry right now, so I'm definitely excited to have a couple months off of school. <laughs> yeah, that's the make it or break it science. If you pass OCHEM, then you can be a doctor, or a chiropractor, anyone in the medical field per se. That's the that's the class that you know separates those that can I do this or not. And it's a pretty yeah. heavy schedule too that, on top that's of a hockey. Tough class. Yes. You know, while we're on the topic of ice hockey, I just have to mention that uh, earlier this month, the Rough Rider Award was given to two ice hockey players. I'm sure you followed their career, Monique and Jocelyn Lamero. Lamero, you Lamero. probably know how Lamero. to pronounce it. Lamoureux, Lamoureux, Lamoureux. Lamoureux. and um, yep. they were pretty impressive in the 2018 hockey uh, tournament, right, and the Olympics. Yes, they have, a, they have been a part of that program for as long as I can remember. I mean, I grew up watching them play at UND and uh, in the Olympics, and yeah, I think I think it was Jocelyn that scored uh, in the shootout to win the Olympics, I, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, I grabbed a little tape of that. Just a little clip of that winning goal. That was pretty exciting. And there it is. Yeah. Yay. Wow. Were you watching that? I, I assume you were. Yeah, I was watching that. It was unbelievable. So you and Jocelyn are both number 17. Yes. Yep. That's got to. I can yeah. see that that's not lost on you. I can <laughs> see the smile. <laughs> and so who else did you look up to as you were going through your hockey career? Um, as far as like definitely those two and winning the women's game. Um, but just my older brother, I think, has been a big one for me. Uh, he was a great player, but just, just a good example in all areas of his life as far as sports and school and uh, just being a good person. So I had a lot of good role models, but. Uh, he was definitely a big one for hockey. Does he still play? He does not. He ran track in college, but he played all the way through high school. And you have four. There's four of you all together, right? So Yes. Yep. Very athletic. I bet when you guys play games or basketball, whatever you do, I bet it's real competitive, right? 
Oh yeah, there can be some <laughs> tears for sure. <laughs> yeah, you play to win. Well, thank you so much, Britta, for joining us today. We wish you the best of luck and we definitely will be keeping track of you and seeing how you do. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. Okay. Right. Bye, Britta. Take Bye, care. Britta. We wish you the yeah. best of everything and we'll send the St. Mary's love your way. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we'll be watching and, and praying for you. So we'll be right back after these messages with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Go for launch. 2018 series winner. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing! But how will we... The closing! Hey everybody, I'm Doug Billings, your host of The Right Side with Doug Billings on Beck News. We bring you high profile guests, ladies and gentlemen, exclusive guests. Now, you're not gonna see these guests in most of the mainstream media outlets. Another thing that I do here is give guests a platform to speak freely. You're not gonna see me censor anybody. Please join us, won't you? Weeknights right here on Beck TV and online at beck.news. Cheers. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back. And it was so fun to see Britta, wasn't it? It was. Absolutely. She's so lively and just, um, I just, I've always admired her. You know, just she's fun to watch in sports. I mean, whether it's track, soccer, or hockey, you just see the passion in her, on her face as she's playing. So. And uh, the curls are a very, very talented um, group of kids, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, obviously, just intelligent, talented, well-rounded. And what girl. I really remembered about her was how much I loved her, her talk, her speech at graduation day. And then I sat down next to her at an open house on graduation day. Oh. And I just found her so poised and mature mm -hmm. and had a nice conversation with her. So I'm whatever. glad you explained that because when people say open house to me, I'm a former realtor. I thought you were out oh. looking at houses. <laughs> Graduation party. Ran into parties. her in a house. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, well, we're hoping coming up as soon um, will be Lila Rose, and she's the founder of Live Action. But while we're waiting for her, we can sit and visit, which we don't often get a chance to do. Well, guess what? Um, Lila is going to. She's going to join us after all. So um, I'm thankful for that because Lila is an amazing person. 
She started Live Action, a pro-life group, when she was just 15 years old. 15. What were you doing when you were 15? Not that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wasn't yeah. that? Yeah. Boy. <laughs> okay, Lila, Lighted welcome to the show. Hi, ladies. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. It's Thanks been a crazy for day us. for you, I understand. <laughs> yes, yes. It's um, we had a conference over the weekend, and so the Monday was an unusually straggling. But <laughs> thanks for your patience. <laughs> On top of it, you are a fairly new mother, right? You're, yes, I have an eighteen-month-old, and then six months pregnant. So we're on number oh, congratulations. An another boy. <laughs> oh, wow. Congratulations! I know I interviewed you recently, and I don't think we knew about the pregnancy back then. At least I didn't know about it. Now the world knows about it. It was early. Yeah, um, Lila. The you know what I love about you is that you are so passionately pro-life, but you often get over into the left media. The mainstream media will interview you and pick up stories on live action. So can you start by telling us what is live action? Sure. So Live Action is a educational human rights not-for-profit, and we serve as the global leader for pro-life education right now. And what that means is we're reaching 15 million people every single week with really powerful, persuasive content, videos, articles, facts about abortion and human dignity. And we primarily do this through online education and reach. So that's social media, that's news websites. Um, we're reaching about 15 million. Um, the people are mostly millennials and Gen Z, so it's a younger audience. And then we also, we don't just do reporting and education, but we also activate people. So that means we're holding events, um, we're training people how they can shut down abortion clinics in their own cities. And we're giving them tools for how they can then join other pro-life groups locally and make a difference wherever they're at. So I'm sure that you've had obstacles along the way. What type of obstacles has your organization run into and how did you deal with it? Well, the thing is with the fight for life, the fight against abortion and to protect preborn children, the institutions are really pro-abortion today throughout the United States and many institutions globally. So in the US, the school system, the public school system is largely pro-abortion. They don't teach respect for human life. They teach abortion as a woman's right. That's also most academia, universities, graduate education. Many major businesses are pro-abortion. You ladies might remember when Georgia was passing their pro-life laws, um, may, many major companies, including tech companies, threatened to pull business out of the state of Georgia because of the pro-life laws that they were trying to pass. And then our president today, you know, the administration is very pro-abortion. So you have media, you have school systems, you have uh, business leaders, all, and then p political leaders, you know, pro Joe Biden, our president is extremely pro-abortion, all in support of the abortion industry. So you're going to see tremendous obstacles in live action. And myself have seen tremendous obstacles, even in things as simple as putting out information on social media, because many of these social media companies are pro-abortion. They have pro-abortion leadership. So we've had, you know, shadow banning issues, censorship issues. Uh, we've had certainly issues just reaching young people because they're being brainwashed. I mean, truly brainwashed by other forces in entertainment media and at their school systems. And so in the in spite of all of that, here's the good news. Despite the fact that the power structures are very pro-abortion today, the pro-life message is so resonant. It's so persuasive and winsome because I think everybody deep down wants to be pro-life. Uh, it's easy to see the humanity of the child once you actually have that window into the womb and you can see the development of the baby. And when people find out about what abortion is, usually they're really disturbed by it and upset. They don't want to support it. So that's what we go, about. you know, that's what gives us our, our, our cope and our courage is continually putting out facts about fetal development, showing the abortion procedure, the power of stories, women who've had abortions who regret it, and seeing this resonate with younger people who then say, okay, I'm not pro-choice like I thought I was supposed to be. I'm pro-life, and it's, uh, it's amazing to see the, the minds and hearts that can change. So what do you say, what do you say to the people? Well, I guess part of me right now, what came to my mind, because and it's kind of long with the vaccine, um, it's population control. And I think that's where a lot of this is. They're trying to control the population. But then what do we say to those people that um, question us, 
well, who's going to take care of these people? These are unwanted children. Who's going to take care of them? Is the government going to raise these children? What do you say? What's your answer to that? Well, first of all, there was a headline in the Wall Street Journal just this morning that said the United States is facing some unprecedented demographic uh, challenges, meaning we're not our birth. We're below a replacement rate in our birth rate. There aren't enough people having children and that this will pose huge economic problems because we have an aging population and not enough young people uh, in the country, period. So it's a it's a myth. Overpopulation is a myth that's been popularized by, I think, some very powerful people who have not the best interests in mind for a global population. And the United States, we need more children, not less. But I would also say, listen, there are wonderful structures in place now to support families in need, to support single moms, to support struggling parents. And there are government programs that exist, but there also is a tremendous not-for-profit network out there, much of it supported and run by the pro-life movement. And I'm referencing the thousands of pregnancy resource centers that exist in virtually every community in America. They offer free support to pregnant moms, young mothers, um, support placing them with jobs, uh, medical care, uh, material resources for their families. So there's actually a lot of structures. You know, there's maternity homes that are free for uh, mothers, especially single mothers. So there are actually a lot of resources out there. The big issue is connecting people to those resources and giving them hope because the abortion industry relies on fear and saying there, there's no help for you. You can't do this. It's very a disempowering message to women. And so what we have to do as a public movement is empower women and say, you can do this. Abortion is never an option. And there is support for you. There are, there are people out there that want to help you financially, emotionally, and, and, and in every way and connect them to those resources. And so as a follow-up kind of to that same question, I know a lot of people are on an adoption list. And it takes years sometimes to find that baby. So what can we do to make adoption more affordable um, or, you know, to let's bring these babies into life and, and work with the adoption system? How, how is that going to work? Well, here's the thing. Most people don't realize this, but one of the reasons adoption is so expensive is because there aren't a lot, enough children. I mean, there's long lists waiting for people waiting to adopt because and they and they're waiting and waiting because there are not enough kids to adopt and newborns to adopt. Um, there are typically 100 to 200,000 children of foster care that are older children, sometimes sibling groups that may be available for adoption. But as far as adopting a newborn into a family, there's a huge shortage. There's not enough newborns because women are choosing too many women are choosing abortion. So I think a big part of uh, improving our adoption system is to advocate for adoption to moms, to women that may be considering abortion and help them understand that this is not a scary, bad thing. And this can be a beautiful thing to give life to this child and bless a family. And it could be an open adoption. The mother can choose to stay involved in the child's life, however she is comfortable with. So that's really, I think in my, in my evaluation, it's an education issue to educate, uh, not just adoptive families on you know why there's such a it's so expensive because you know well there's a lot of important practices that need to be put in place to protect children and make sure they're placed with good families but there's just not enough kids and so women who are considering abortion we should be encouraging them about how beautiful this life-saving option is um we're going to take a break and then we have so much more to talk about especially how you've managed to successfully navigate the media and get into their sphere at times because I have to think they're afraid of you, Lila. When you speak, people listen. But we're going to be right back with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Hop in the rig and go down the road with me. We'll cover local and national stories that impact you. Down the road with Joel Heitkamp weekdays at 530 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news.
respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's Best Contractors, 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we are once again joined with Lila Rose, the founder of Live Action, which is the leading national pro-life action or human rights organization in the country. You told me during the break you have 1.4 billion, not million, billion views on your videos, right? That's right, and these are videos that show fetal development of the preborn child, they are actual former abortionists explaining what happens during the abortion procedure. They're very powerful uh, videos of people's stories of women choosing life. So every single view is represents somebody whose mind and heart is being touched. And that's exactly the business that we are in. We're trying to change hearts and minds on abortion. I want to direct everybody to your website, liveaction.org. Um, so you can get lots more information, take a look at some of the videos, liveaction.org. It's at the bottom of the screen. And how is it that you are able to get on to network news stations, Atlantic Monthly, New York Times? You can actually get into their sphere, which is a huge score, because if you can get over there, then you can maybe counteract the, the brainwashing that's going on. Well, one of the biggest drivers of getting access or getting opportunities to be interviewed by more hostile media has been live actions investigative reporting. So one of the things that I started doing as a college student and I've done over the last decade has been actually doing undercover investigative reporting in abortion clinics. So we've actually gone undercover in, say, Planned Parenthood clinics, exposed sexual abuse cover up. We've exposed medical misinformation to women. We've exposed sexist uh, practices, uh, targeting baby girls in utero for abortion just because they're girls. These sorts of reports, infanticide in abortion clinics, so babies in late-term abortions who are born alive and left to die. These sorts of reports have won some traction in mainstream media. It's really hard, though, because most mainstream media is very biased. They're very pro-abortion. But because of this work, we've been able to make some uh, progress, and that's why the Atlantic, for example, has called um, some of our work the face of the millennial um, anti-abortion movement, and we've been able to get our videos shown on most network t um, TV stations throughout the years. So you were with um, Project Veritas for a while, too, weren't you? 
Well, I, I wasn't with Project Veritas, but before James O'Keefe founded his organization, he partnered with Live Action um, when he was still working uh, for another organization. And yes, he was very um, supportive and helpful in some of our earliest investigations, exposing sexual abuse cover up at Planned Parenthood abortion clinics and exposing Planned Parenthood accepting racist donations to target black babies in the womb. In the background, we see your new book, Fighting for Life. Can you tell us about that? I'd love to. So this is a book that I just wrote. It just came out, and it's a manual for anybody who feels called to make a difference in the world and who has this cause that's really burning in their hearts. Um, I talk about the power of heartbreak, that if we let ourselves be wounded by the hurts and the injustices in the world, that can give us the inspiration to confront them. And then I go through all the steps that I've taken over the last 15 years in growing live action, in investigative reporting, and having to present before the United Nations or the European Parliament, and all the lessons that I've learned for an activist or a world changer in the making. And it's a book I wish I had when I started out as a teenager and I didn't have a manual, but I wanted to write the manual for other people of any age so that they too can make the difference they're called to make in the world. So that's not necessarily for abortion, that's just for any cause, is that right? Exactly, any cause. And there's a lot of important causes waiting to be championed. And I believe we are all called to stand up to fight for the causes that matter most. Of course, I would say the biggest human rights cause today is the fight for life, is the fight against abortion, because it's the leading death toll. Over 60 million children have been killed in the United States alone. Um, every single day, they say over 100,000 children are being killed by abortion globally. So this is the leading human rights issue of our day. But there's, of course, a lot of other causes, too. So no matter your cause, your calling, your mission, uh, I wrote the book to be a manual to assist you to stand up for what's right. It really is, too, because I did read the book, and it's partly autobiographical, which is very interesting to see how, as a 15-year-old, how you were inspired when you saw a picture, right, of an abortion or of an aborted babies, and you were horrified. And from that point on, this became your cause. But whatever your cause, you really do help inspire people and take them step by step. And you mentioned earlier that you may begin with a broken heart, and we need to not be afraid of that. That you mm -hmm. used that, you used that to create the passion to get you where you are today with live action, right? Exactly. And I think it's easy sometimes to feel helpless. You know, we learn about problems in the world and injustices and we think, oh, what can I possibly do? So I think it's, first of all, paying attention to the injustices, letting your heart be broken, and then realizing that, you know, our lives at this time in human history, they're not an accident. So you and I, everybody listening, you were born at this particular time in human history for a reason. God has a specific calling for your life. And that includes standing up for the most important causes of the day. And you have unique gifts, you have a unique unique experiences that can equip you to fight for that cause in a, in a unique and important way. So part of the book is unpacking what is your unique, what are your unique gifts? What is your unique your unique calling or sense of mission that you can step into and that the world desperately needs so that all of us can be part of changing the world for the better? You know, well, they, I, I, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I know that they say things don't matter to you until it affects you. Can you mm -hmm. point out to our, our viewers, how does this affect them? They are mm -hmm. grandparents and their grandchildren are already here. How do or why would they get involved in, I would say, pro-life versus anti-abortion? It's a really good question, and I, I would argue that abortion affects every single one of us. I think that we all, whether we realize it or not, know someone who's had an abortion. Um, they say that one out of every three or four women in the United States have had an abortion. So there's likely someone in your family history or someone in your um, extended family or friend group who's had an abortion. You might not even know it. Uh, it's the very fact that we've survived. You know, if you are alive today, you weren't aborted. Your mother chose life. That's a privilege and a gift. And so we should fight for the lives of children whose who, the, the children whose lives are in danger. And then it's also making a better future. You know, in a country that sees human life as cheap, if this country continues to see human life as cheap, as discardable, some something that can be thrown away, that does affect all of us because it coarsens 
our moral fabric and it it weakens the bonds between us. I mean, the reason I would argue we have so much violence, so much mental health crisis in our country, the reason we have, I think, so much secularism that doesn't see the human person as valuable is because we've accepted abortion and we just we're living we're living with the killing of our most vulnerable members. And so if we can undo that problem, if we can fight for their lives, I believe we we ultimately elevate our whole culture and help heal the moral fabric of our nation. Lila, what do you feel have been some of the biggest successes of live action? Well, my favorite successes, and we hear this um, daily, are when young people, men, women, tell us, I had no idea after seeing this video about abortion that we show them through online social media typically, uh, they say, I was, I thought I was pro-choice, but now I'm pro-life and I could never have an abortion or I could never support abortion. And then um, even better than that is when we hear from young women who say, I was scheduled to have an abortion and we just got a message from a woman um, recently. There's, we constantly get these messages from young women, um, but they say, I was had an abortion scheduled or I was thinking of having an abortion. And I saw that video or I saw that, article on my social media feed, it popped up or a friend shared it. And now I know I can't go through with the abortion and I want to choose life. And that there's nothing more rewarding than knowing that our organization and our work has helped, has contributed to helping save a life. Well, with 1.4 billion views, you are growing. reaching far <laughs> and wide and growing. And, and yeah, I hope we can add to that. Go to so, liveaction.org to learn more. And I know we only have a few seconds left, but are you are you banned on Facebook if someone shares that video? Is there like a warning over the top of that? We only have a few. Seconds. We've heard we've had suppression issues, but largely speaking, we're still growing on social media. So if you're on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, we are there. YouTube, please share the content. You'll find it at LiveAction.org, um, and help save lives and change lives. Perfect. Yeah, definitely go to LiveAction.org to learn more. Thank you so much, Lila, for joining us today. Thank we you, ladies. We will definitely be following you. You do amazing work. Thank you for that. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back after these yep. messages on With Ladies, ladies of, another of Another View. I'm back. <laughs>40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. 
Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. Watch us weeknights at 9 Central on Beck News and online at Beck.News. Could you do us a favor? Beck TV is a finalist for Best Local TV Station in the Bismarck Tribune's Best of the Best. Vote now through August 9th by text or online. Vote for your leader in local, Beck TV. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. And today's one of those shows that are flying by for me. Big time. It is. It I mean, is. I guess that's what happens when you have amazing guests on. Absolutely. Great information. So on to the lighter side. And I, t I, this may be light if you like passenger travel by train, which I think is fun. I, I love to travel by train. Have you ever taken a train? I have not here in the United States, but over in Europe I've taken trains. Okay. I did in second grade because in Bismarck Public Schools, when you were in second grade, for po folks my age, we would take a bus over to Mandan, we would board the train and ride it back to Bismarck and then get, <laughs> we'd learn all about the trains, oh, how we'd learn about, you know, oh. the depots and, and that type of thing. Um, the teachers you were You were here great. then when I they was. had passenger service mm -hmm. and that ended a little over 40 years ago. I think the Oops. last. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I remember my sister, Ellen, she had, she and her new husband, uh, only husband, but her, <laughs> her, her newlyweds, yes. they took a trip to Minneapolis, and it was from the depot in, I want to say in Bismarck, and went to um, Minneapolis. So I remember that. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I always wanted to take that trip from Minot all the way out to the West Coast through the mountains. I think that would it be a fun It is amazing. Trip. We've done it several times. I think our family's done it three times all the way out to Oregon. It is so amazing because you go through Glacier Park, and then in the morning you go through, Idaho, uh, I think, Idaho down um, Portland, but you're going along, um, what is it, Columbia River. Oh. It's so gorgeous. You're going through Part the Part of the mountains. Yellowstone, too, I think, right? No. Is, no? No, not on that route. I don't, I, but you take it in Minot, and we don't have passenger service now in Bismarck anymore, but this Wednesday, if you're interested, there is the possibility that it could come back. There is um, Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority. They're presenting a request to our city and county commissioners to bring it back into the Bismarck Mandan area. So there's a meeting this Wednesday, July 28th from 11 a.m. to 12, and it's right at the chamber building. And I also posted on our Facebook page, Ladies of Another View, that you can also go via Zoom. And if you want more information for that link to Zoom, I'm sure you can contact the chamber, the Bismarck so what, Mandan what is this chamber. map that we're looking at? What This is the Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority, and it shows some of their proposed routes. And right now, they're going across the country, that top, um, blue that top blue line, and the red is some of the proposed. But they also want to go all the way from Montana to Minneapolis, which I would love. I, it is I think the best is. way to travel. So, it, you know, it's one of those romantic things. I know a lot of people that have taken a train trip across Canada and then, you know, come back into the States in Washington and then, you know, traveled from there or just taken it back. Well, perhaps There's ladies of another view can go ahead and do some on-location stuff along the rail line and we Ooh. can all go out to the West Coast. Did you hear that? <laughs> it is. It is such an amazing way to travel and it's, a, um, it's fun to do with your family because you're just together on a train. There's always the viewing cars. You can go for scenery. We would play Farkle or cards, mm -hmm. go to the dining car, and you're just hanging out together on the train. Wow, I need to do that. Amazing. In this world that's, you know, so busy and hectic, and, and what I love is you don't have to go through security. Oh, yeah. Nobody goes through your bags. <laughs> yes. Yet. Am, I, am I jinxing it? What it oh. Yeah. It's a possibility. I don't know, because you have access to your luggage on the train, and I don't know that they've, I've never heard of a train hijacking, there's no such thing, or any kind of dangerous situation on a train, with, you know, from the passenger so, standpoint. So what do we all think will be the, you know, the stumbling blocks? I know that in this area, there's replacing a railroad bridge coming up, 
You know, there's people that want to save the old railroad bridge and use it as a walking bridge and require the railroad to build another bridge next to it instead of replacing the one that's there. And there's a lot of discussion back and forth on whether it could or should happen. And there's dollars involved. So when there's dollars involved and decisions to be made because of it, well, and you made a good point during the break, too. You had asked about um, where would we have a depot? Would we use the old, the Bismarck one. Depot right now? It's been a restaurant. It's been a brewery. And I know they're, I think they're renovating it yet again. Um, so would we use that or would we use the Mandan Depot? Because that is kind of sort of vacant, too. That There's been some restaurants in that one. Um, so or, just, or would they take another piece of vacant land that maybe isn't in downtown Bismarck? You know, they used to have the bus depot downtown. They move that out to the east end of Bismarck. It, you know, it, it could happen. Oh, I think and it'd be fun would, to use the existing oh, historic they would buildings. would use the existing totally cool. tracks. And tracks, one consideration sure. is um, if we, because you can't take the train from Minot, and so would we take away some of the Amtrak customers if we started um, having a rail service here, passenger service here in Bismarck? Well, I and, just, it depends on the destination. If they don't go to the same places, then the answer to that would be no. You know, if people are doing it for pleasure, they'll get on for pleasure. They might lose some of that. But a lot of people use that to go through the, uh, that certain specific mountain range. So I don't know. I think it'd be okay. Here's, I want to show just a picture of the last year we had the train service here in Bismarck. And I, I always miss that it's not here. That's not, that looks yeah. familiar. That looks like something we'd have done <laughs> in grade school. It's exciting, you know, that you just want to intentionally plan a trip by train because there's nothing else like it. Yep. You're traveling, people are so friendly with one another because you're on the train together. You're looking at the scenery. You don't have to worry about driving a car or anything. But anyways, that we'll, we'll keep tabs on that and um, go to the meeting this Wednesday from 11 to 12 at the Chamber if you're interested in being a part of that. And um, join us again. We'll be uh, down the road with Joel coming up next. And join us tomorrow with Ladies of Another View on deck. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I back my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere Pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. Go Anywhere Pillow is really comfortable, so that's what I really like. It's nice and supportive and it's nice and small. The My Pillow Topper, for the first time, has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the My Pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. My Pillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but so much more. For example, you get my six-piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.